pushing buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 346. Today I'm going to chat with Heather Allen from High Caliber, discuss news on the frame and receiver rule case, highlight the updated PAR from Troy Industries, and talk about an outrageous judge who doesn't believe in the Second Amendment. I am your host, Ava Flannell. Heather, how are you doing today? I'm great, Ava. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. I got to say, I might be winging the show a little bit. I've just been flying off the seat of my pants. And as you guys may or may not know, I've been getting really involved in politics. And thankfully, so I'm trying to think when this show comes out, because we are recording on a Friday. So as of today, there are only 12 days left in the legislative session. So what, there will be 10, nine days left. We're really getting down to the nitty gritty. And if you guys didn't know this, because there's so much stuff that I've learned about politics that I did not know. But once a year, or actually depending on how the state is set up, because some states don't even have a legislation session every year, it's like every other year. But in Colorado, starting from like January until May 8th, they have I think it's 120 days to pass bills. And then after May 8th, they can't pass anymore. And I'm telling you that day is not coming soon enough because I am exhausted. I am like, you know how they show you pictures of like the president, you know, when he went into office and then when he came out, I feel I'm feeling that. Like I see why now they get aged so quickly. I I just look great. (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) There's definitely a little bit of few gray hairs popping up, and that you know, I know we're not there before, but yeah. So that's what I've been dealing with. So I didn't really have a chance to look at the show notes, but you know, we are just gonna wing it. Before we start talking about everything that you do, I want to take a quick break. Talk about IWI. If you guys want a rugged and reliable gun, you definitely need to check out the Galil Ace. It is honestly one of my favorite guns. I've got the Gen 2 version in 7.62 by 39, but you can also get it in 5.56, 5.45 by 39, and 7.62 NATO. One of the best things about the Galil is that it shares a lot of features of the AK, but the charging handle is on the left side, so the manual of arms is easier for those not used to AKs, which I'm somewhat used to AKs, but even then, it just makes sense to have that charging handle on the left-hand side, and I greatly appreciate that. They're insanely rugged and have a dust cover that's spring-loaded, so it always covers the action as the charging handle reciprocates. The Gen 2 version has a bunch of upgrades that people always did to the Gen 1, including the M-Lock forend. You can get them in rifle versions or pistols. Either way, you're not going to regret it. It is such a fun gun. I always say it's kind of like the higher-end AK. Check it out, IWI.us, and don't forget to use the code GUNFUNNY15, that's all one word, you'll get 15% off anything that you buy in their web store. Learn the things you never knew on Deconstructing the Industry. Heather, thanks so much for coming on. You and I, yeah, we course. we met in Texas at the Gun Owners of America National Women's Range Day event, which was a great event put on. And I'm really thankful for how many women I met there. A lot of them were just like really cool. And, you know, there's nothing better than meeting like-minded women. But yeah, you were social butterfly, just making the rounds, introducing yourself to everyone. And when I met you, you had your book with you which you wrote and it was you shooting a gun in all 50 states, correct? I did. I did. Yes. Okay. So before we start talking about that, kind of give me a rundown, I guess, what it is that you do in the industry. And then a follow-up to that is how you got into the industry. So I currently teach concealed carry handgun classes. And then I teach basic handgun classes. And I sit on the North Carolina Concealed Carry Instructor Association. So that's been kind of exciting. And then I recently got my FFL. So fun stuff going on in North Carolina these days. Nice. How I got into it was 
I grew up in Southern California and it's kind of similar with a lot of people where like no one really shot that much in Southern California. My dad had a gun, but it was like, don't touch it. It's under um, the bed. Don't touch it. It's in the closet. Okay, let's go surfing. (laughs) And so (sighs) when I met my husband, he was in the Navy. He was also getting into law enforcement. Um, So there was guns in the house. And then he would be gone with the Navy Reserve for weeks at a time. I had like an 18 month old by myself for a while. And I was remember thinking, you know, knowing him, how like he would tell me, you know, 20 minutes is a good response for a deputy to go to an emergency. Like that was in my mind. So I remember thinking I should probably learn how to use this and protect myself and my child when he's out of town. And then I also started working for the California Rifle Pistol Association. And that kind of what catapulted me into Second Amendment rights, constitutional rights. I had a lot of women ask me, like, where do you work? The rifle pistol? Can you teach me how to shoot? And then it evolved to like friends of friends of friends and strangers saying, you know, you taught so-and-so, can you teach me how to shoot? And I realized there was kind of a, a need for especially like female instructors in Southern California. And I worked in Orange County, LA County. And then when we moved to North Carolina about three years ago, I noticed the need was more like, can you help me get my concealed carry permit? And so I kind of jumped on that and uh, got all certified and squared away. And it's been a really good, really good industry the fact that I get to meet awesome women like you has just been amazing. That's really impressive, though, that you started in California because, you know, just because it's not even really around and so you don't see that type of industry, I'd say. I mean, there's gun stores, but it's like, you know, it's not as as, as prevalent. And so for you to just like, OK, you know, like realize that, like, one, you should be in charge of your own safety and you have a child to take care of. And then also going as far as, you know, getting involved in the industry, like that's pretty courageous and pretty amazing. And I have to imagine, like, probably a lot of the people that you talk to or your friends were probably like, what are you doing? You know, because I mean, I and I only say that because I used to live in New York City. And it's crazy how, you know, when I moved back to Colorado, I kept in touch with a lot of people that I was friends with in New York City. And I've realized Mm -hmm. as of recently, a lot of them have unfriended me on Facebook. (laughs) Like they probably just think I lost my mind. But really, they're lost. Yeah, they're lost. I know. Weeding out the losers. Yeah. No, I've been watching you and it definitely takes me back to fighting in California. And I'm just cheering you on so hard as much as I can and like just encourage you to do exactly what you're doing because what I realize in California is like once you lose a right, there's it's almost impossible to get that right back. And it's so frustrating and it's it's a very time consuming, but what you're doing, it's just very admirable. And I'm very proud that just to see all the hard work you're putting in. Thank you. I appreciate that. What made you decide to write this book? Um, okay. So I wish it was a, a happier reason why I started, but um I had like both my parents passed away kind of back to back and I was just kind of in a funk and I remember like going through their house of 40 years. It's just me. I don't have any siblings. So I just kind of remember being down. I was like, girl, you need something fun to look forward to. <laughs> I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And I had like this whole conversation with myself. Like, what do I love to do? I love to travel. I love to shoot. I love America. And it just all kind of came together. And I was like, you know what? I want to go shoot a gun in all 50 states. And I had no clue that I'd be writing a book about it. It was just kind of like a fun adventure I thought about doing. And then a good friend of mine, he was on Instagram, like holding up his book that he had written. I was like, wait a minute, if he could write a book, sure, I could too. And so that kind of sparked a whole other thing of like looking back at Instagram pictures, like, oh, yeah. When I was in Virginia, I shot on two two twenty two with the twenty two, and just kind of like picked up the the pictures from there. So it all worked out. It's it's been a, a really great journey. Hmm. Wow, I'm really sorry to hear about your parents. That's oh, thanks. That was rough. I know. Well, my mom passed away, going on twelve years now, and uh-huh. it it's really tough. And that's kind of why I got into the industry. But I, I mean, I always feel for somebody, anybody who experiences that, because it's like, it's mm-hmm. a pain that I wouldn't wish on anyone, even my worst. Yeah, enemies. it's been interesting how many people have reached out, like some even like strangers are like, I picked up your book and I could barely get past that first page because they had also lost their parents. Mm-hmm. And it is crazy how like one 
parent will go and then very quickly, I feel like the next will go. It's just sad how that could happen sometimes. Yeah. Well, my dad is still kicking, but he is, he's almost 80 years old, which people, Mm -hmm. when they see him, they're like, there's no way he's like in his late seventies. He's 78. And Uh I mean, he's in, he's in pretty good shape, but yeah, I have seen pictures. He does look in really good shape. Yeah. Well, he could write a book. I know. (laughs) I know. I I actually think about that too, all the time, like all the stuff that he's accomplished. But yeah, that's pretty incredible. Then at what point, like how many states had you already shot in? And I like before you had only shot, yeah, in four states. So it was like Arizona, California, Hawaii. And then we did take a trip to North Carolina. So I had four states. And the funny part was like, you know, everyone's fleeing California. So we had a lot of friends also move out of California. So it took me three years to shoot in all the rest of the states because I would just go visit friends in like, you know, Oklahoma, Florida, Tennessee, Kansas, Colorado, like you name it, like everyone's moving. I'm like, hey, can I come visit and shoot a gun? Like, sure, come on over. So, They're like, um, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to take a quick break and talk about gators. Like I said last week, gators released their new Havoc glasses with several different colors available. And they're very similar to the blast shields where you can change out the lenses with this, you know, a few seconds. But these ones are much bigger. And Heather, I'm sure with as much as you've shot, you've probably hit, you've been hit with like hot, brass casings brass. before, right? In the eyes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always say, I'm like, if you haven't gotten hit with a brass casing or it, with a casing, you're not shooting enough. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And you definitely don't want your eyes exposed to that. But I've seen worse of the worst where like one lady's eyebrow, you know, got singed. And I personally, I love my eyebrows. I've really gotten into my eyebrows. <laughs> I would cry if they got singed. And I'm telling you, if you wear these glasses, like not only are your eyebrows and your eyes and most of your face safe, but it also, it really, at first when I got them, I was like, wow, these are really big. I don't know if I could pull them off, but like I've noticed now I've been using them in a few shooting videos and I'm like, okay, I'm actually, I think I'm able to kind of pull these off. But I've also noticed it's sort of like the style now, you know, to have these big glasses and... I don't know. But yeah, so if you guys are into that, definitely check it out. But otherwise, if you want something a little bit more traditional, Gators has you covered. Head on over to gators.com forward slash Ava15. And by using that URL, you're going to get 15% off your entire order. Tell me a little bit about the book. What did you specifically say? Like, did you talk about your experience? Like, hey, you know, I'm in California now and blah, blah, blah. And then this is the gun that I shot. Like, what all? Because I haven't had a chance to read your book. Oh, sure. Yeah, so it's state by state. And I talk about the range I shot at, where, uh, with, who, you know, friends or family, whoever I shot with, what type of gun I shot, And then maybe like a fun little story about the trip. And then the next page would be followed by that state's gun laws, just because I think it's so important for people. If they travel, it's so good to know what that state's gun laws are. You could definitely get into some trouble. Yeah, I know. Isn't it crazy that like, ultimately, all these 50 states are America, but yet it can change just by going over state lines and how much it could drastically change. You know, Mm -hmm. something that's legal in one state isn't going to be legal in the other And so I'd always tell people, especially if they're doing like a road trip, I'm like, definitely verify what those laws are, because the last thing you want is to get pulled over. They, you know, decide to search your vehicle or something Mm -hmm. and then all hell breaks loose. Right. Or even if like it's happened, I'm sure you heard the story of Shanine Allen in New Jersey. She was just trying to literally comply. Right. That's exactly what I was just thinking about, actually. So if you guys didn't hear about her, I I think I've talked about her like maybe two years ago or something. But yeah, she was Mm -hmm. in New Jersey and crossed state lines and or did she cross into New Jersey? She had her concealed carry permit from Pennsylvania and was driving through New Jersey. And she told the police officer who pulled over, she's like, hey, you know, I have a gun. Just want to let you know, here's my concealed carry Mm -hmm. permit. And it was like, oh, okay, well, out of the car, handcuffs, you know, she gets put in jail. Going to jail. Yeah. And... She was facing 42 months of prison. Wow. Yeah. Literally... Two little kids in the back seat, too. 
like some of this stuff is just like how like you'd like to think that you know police officers and i'm not discrediting police officers like i i think they do a lot for us and i would not want to be in their shoes but some of these people and let's face it there's crappy people in every you know organization but some of these Mm -hmm. people it's like how could you even you know here she is trying to do the right thing trying to offer up more information than i'm sure because I don't know what the law is there, but here in Colorado, there's no duty to inform unless they ask. Mm-hmm. Here she's so just... I, yeah, I did put that. That was one part that I put in every single gun law was, is there a duty to inform? And there was one state that was crazy. I want to say it was like North Dakota, where if you got pulled over and you were constitutionally caring, there is no duty to inform. If you are concealed carrying now you do have a duty to inform <laughs> it's like that's so weird because where are you putting yeah. this gun in your car like obviously you're not right. gonna have it out in the open mm-hmm. that's really weird interesting yeah. yeah and yeah i don't know it's so crazy especially these laws i will say mm-hmm. you know since i've been getting more politically active which i have a good i have a fun announcement to make here shortly but mm-hmm. Yeah. But since I've been getting more politically active and realizing like how a bill is made and seeing how, you know, the House and the Senate vote on these bills and the whole process, like, I don't know, you just realize like, man, the law and the government and everything is just so it's so corrupt. It's it so just corrupt. it's yes. so eye opening. And I think if nothing else, like people should they should like view this for themselves, like follow a Mm -hmm. bill and see exactly what happens and how it becomes law. And it's just, I'm like, no wonder people are putting their head in the sand and they don't want to fight this. You know, I mean, it's, you're fighting against corruption, but that was one bill in California. The entire bill had to do with amusement parks and like how high a slide or a ride could be. Well, at like midnight, they completely gutted it and made it into an anti-Second Amendment bill. <laughs> Wait, so elaborate on that? Um, so this happened a while ago, but I did make a video on my Instagram how there was a bill that had to do with amusement parks. Mm-hmm. Like that was the title of the bill. And then at like midnight, they gutted the bill and made it with all these like anti-gun laws. And, oh, like, I see what you're saying. So they, yeah. Uh, they, yeah, we've seen that quite often, like where they just insert, you know, some stuff that has nothing to do with the actual topic. And they mm-hmm. know, and because, you know, a lot of these politicians are just like going from meeting to meeting or, you know, committee to, you know, carrying all these bills and stuff, they're not going to have time to read all of this stuff. And so then they just put mm-hmm. it in there and then people sign on it stupidly without reading it. And right. Yeah. And what else was really frustrating, especially in California, I'm sure there's more now, but when I left, there was 10 million gun owners in the state of California. If we all banded together and voted for certain politicians, and it doesn't even matter what party, but just like agree with our values. Just think of all the headaches we would avoid. And I I did actually run when I left California. I was like, you know what? I don't want to California, my North Carolina. And so I put my name in and I ran for city council. And it was so disappointing that only 20% of voters came out to vote. So that's another thing. It's like, we got to get people to actually come out, do the research, and then actually vote for who they want to represent them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm hesitant to like to announce this too early, but... Hopefully when the show comes out, we will be up and going. If not, give it a few more days if there's been any hiccups. But I have teamed up with Leslie Hollywood. And if you guys have watched any of my YouTube videos, she is the woman from Rally for Our Rights. And she's, you know, letting the public know about what's going on with all of these anti-gun bills. She's incredibly informed. I mean, to the point where she's borderline just brilliant. And her and I have just been so fed up with everything that's going on. And unfortunately, we're fighting these bills and, you know, we're putting in all this effort. But ultimately, we are so outnumbered by Democrats. And I think Democrats make up like 80 percent of the entire capital. And then there's like the 20 percent that's Republicans. So it's really hard even for the Republicans that are there to fight these bills because we're just Mm -hmm. so outnumbered. So we need to bring balance back. And we've identified, so the entire House is up for re-election this year, and then half of the Senate is up for re-election this year. 
And we looked at the House and we identified 16 seats that Democrats won by a less than 10 percent margin. So we've decided to create a company that essentially allows us to campaign for these districts that are very, you know, like I guess you could say swing districts where it's very close, where these Democrats just barely won. And we're going to campaign in those districts and we're going to try to get Republicans in those seats. Because at this point, if this continues and Democrats continue to make up the majority, we don't really stand a chance of fighting any of this. And that said, I'm not trying to sound super anti-Democrat because there has been some pretty good Democrats that have also, you know, fought for us and, you know, our gun owners and stuff like that. But I do think that there's a lot to be said about having that balance. And so the company is called Balancing the Rockies, because I don't think that the entire house should be Republicans either. I think that there should be that healthy checks and balance to a degree. That's what we're going to be doing. And that's exciting. Congratulations. Thanks. And so we are taking on donations. We've already gotten donations before we were even able to take on donations. (laughs) And some of these people have been very generous. And all these donations are going to go towards the campaign. And what's nice, too, is, you know, Leslie and I, I feel like we're pretty level headed. We have a pretty good idea of, you know, what's going on, especially in Colorado and within these districts. But also as far as marketing, we're both very smart. Like that's what she does for a living. And so I feel like we can really, you know, turn this around. Spread and she, the word. Yeah. And then yeah. she has access to like all kinds of stuff. I mean, people that have voted, you know, how they vote, when they vote, you know, if it's just at a national level, if they vote for, you know, everything what they're registered as like, it's just, you can really geek out on all this information, but that's what I'm going to be doing. And it's probably the last thing that I want to do, but I'm also just so fed up. And as they say, you have to be the change that you want to see. So here I am. Have you ever thought about running or are you good just supporting those that you want to see? I've thought about it. One, I'm like, man, I would like the amount of criticism that all of these people receive. But at the same time, I'm like, I've created some pretty thick skin already as far as I've gotten. (laughs) Right. But I just I don't know. I mean, it's just it's a lot like it's essentially Mm -hmm. three months and you get paid very little and you're just working nonstop. And depending on how close you are to the Capitol, you have to stay close to the Capitol. So you're not even at your own home. And it's just I mean, I feel for really everyone that's doing this and then to be on top of your game and know all of the bills and be able to speak on the House floor or the Senate floor and, you know, but who knows, maybe in the next couple of years. But right now, I really want to concentrate on this and try to you know, because if I ran, that might be one district, which my district is still Republican, so it doesn't make sense. But if it got to the point where it was, you know, there wasn't a Republican, then maybe I would take one for the team. But I still, mm-hmm. I would like to do this first. And then after a few years, then maybe run for something. Yeah, but. it was a really good experience. One reason I, I stuck with uh, city council was it was mind blowing that in California, there were city council members and like local elected officials. And they were like, you know what? We don't want gun shows in our county. And they just banned gun shows. It was so frustrating. And then I moved to North Carolina and I got to meet a Wilmington city council member. And I put him in my book because he took a picture of him and his son. And he's like, two tickets to the gun show when they were at the gun show (laughs) and like promoting it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so night and day where you have these elected officials, you know, wanting to boot the gun shows and then you have one here in North Carolina promoting it. I was like, wow. So yeah, that was one reason I was like, just, just your local elections are so important as well. Oh, absolutely. So important. And they know this, you know, they know that like they can't make these changes overnight at a national level. So they are coming after everything at a local level and we're only going to be concentrating on gun rights. That's you know, ultimately. And then we're also later on down the road going to start a nonprofit and we will be the go-to place for all things gun related because there's a lot of misinformation out there and people who Mm -hmm. want to get, you know, active and fight, they don't even know how. And there's just not a lot of tools and, you know, information out there. So we're also going to be doing that as well. So I'm excited, but that is very exciting. Wow. I Um, can't wait to watch everything unfold. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned. But again, that is called Balancing the Rockies. And we do have a a Facebook and Instagram account. I haven't created a Twitter account yet, but feel free to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
in the meantime, so there's one other thing that, well, there's two other things that I wanted to talk to you about. So you also, you said that you're coordinating the North Carolina Ladies Range Day with GOA and Empower That's GOA, right. right? That's super yes, exciting. It's coming up. <laughs> when, yeah. when are you guys doing that? That is May 11th. So it's the day before Mother's Day. Oh, and wow. the range actually sells handmade chocolate. So I'm like, best of both worlds. We got guns and chocolate for Mother's Day. We just got to bring in some flowers and then we'll have the trifecta. Going, yeah. But... Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Well, that's really yeah. cool. So essentially it's like GOA and Empower to Air. They just trying to make the rounds throughout the United States and just like put on these like national women's range days. Because I think that yeah. that's great. Yeah, I believe there's six of us now in the States. I think it's like um, there was just one in Michigan and then we had the big one in Texas, North Carolina, and then I think Florida and a few more states. So I think they're looking for for more reps um, for Gun Owners of America, the Empowered 2A division. Very cool. Well, I definitely think that if we're going to see change, it's going to start with women. And it's really important to welcome all of the new female gun owners and encourage more people to become gun owners. Because I do think that, you know, if we are going to, and I've said this before, if we're going to move that needle, I think it's going to start with women. So kudos to you Mm -hmm. guys for doing that. It's funny how many men they hear what the deal is. It's $20 for the entire day that includes all your ammunition, your range fees, your targets, and a catered lunch. Oh, wow. And all these men are like, I'm coming with my wig on. (laughs) Well, there was, I mean, in Texas, there was a lot of men that came with their wives or girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And so I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, I mean, if they're there to show some support and buy a gun or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's Um, cool. I also saw that you mentioned that you invented something cool for (laughs) ladies on the range. So this I'm really excited to hear about. All right. Nobody steal this idea. (laughs) You heard it here first. I'm really excited. I just, well, I'm an RSO on a range a few days a week. And I noticed um, when I go cold, you know, I'd have to take my bulky head pro off or if I had like the strings um, with the the ear protection, like it would, I turn around, it would fall off. And so I looked online and I tried to find like a woman's headband with connected ear pro and there was nothing on the market. And so I just made a few prototypes of a headband with connected ear pro. And I've been living with these things on the range every day and I'm really excited about them. So. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Have, you, have you posted a picture of them yet? I definitely want to check it out. I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I was, I was going to after this interview. (laughs) Very cool. I definitely want to check it out. I'm going to take another quick break. Talk about Mantis. If you guys want to dry fire your AR, but you don't want to keep pulling back that pesky charging handle, definitely get the Blackbeard X. Essentially, you take out the bolt carrier group and the charging handle and you replace it with the Blackbeard X. And then the magazine is the battery pack. So there's the Blackbeard and then there's the Blackbeard X. And both of them will allow you to dry fire your AR. I personally like the Blackbeard X because it has everything that you would typically see on the Mantis X devices like the X2, X3, and X10. So it'll tell you exactly like your movements and, you know, and and how you're pulling the trigger and stuff like that. Whereas the Blackbeard doesn't have all of that, but it allows you to dry fire. And then they also have them now for the SIG MCX, which it's not just the MCX like that has so many other guns that it opens that up to. But yeah, it's freaking awesome. The analysis of it just is pretty eye-opening. We're like, wow, I move a lot more to the right before I get to the target on the left. And, you know, and it it just, it kind of just makes you a lot more mindful of your movements so that you can take your shots quicker. And it just helped me a lot. So check it out, mantisx.com. Heather, so kind of going back to your training, do you teach men, women, just women? And like, how often are you teaching? And if somebody wanted to sign up for a class, where could they find you? Sure. No, it's funny. Maybe you've seen this as well, but I don't know if everyone just had on their New Year's resolution, <laughs> learn how to shoot a gun, get a concealed carry c- permit because man, by January of this year, it's just been blowing up. So I'll, sometimes I'll have a few lessons in one day. Uh, I feel like regular handgun lessons have been picking up before it was almost just concealed carry 
permit classes. I'll do um, private concealed carry classes, which is what uh, kind of nice because in the area, I feel like they only kind of offer big classes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been pretty busy. I teach men, women, and the first Thursday of the month, I do a women's ladies range day. And I'm excited for May's range day because it's right before the Kentucky Derby. And I make all the women wear huge hats and then mm. we shoot big guns on that day too. So that's always fun. That's hilarious. That sounds like so much fun. I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah, and I I love thing. those big hats, like the Kentucky, uh-huh. the Kentucky Derby hats. Like, oh, I love those things. I just, I think it's so fun. I would love to actually go to the Kentucky Derby at some point. In I my life. highly recommend it. It was about two years ago. My neighbor and I, we went, and that was one of the best trips in the book. I talk about because uh, we went to the Kentucky Derby, and then the day before. We're like, you know, what should we go do? Well, we bought these big hats and we spent way too much money to just wear them one time. So we <laughs> wore them to the, to the shooting range. Yeah. And everyone was kind of staring at us, but um, we shot really good. And so people were <laughs> kind of like, okay, they know what they're doing. But that was a good, a good time. That's yeah. funny. You're like, listen, it keeps the sun out of our eyes. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm on your website right now and it looks like you're definitely doing a lot. That's crazy that you're teaching sometimes like multiple times a day, which is kind of what this I week? started out doing. Yeah, yeah, it's been yeah, morning lesson, then an afternoon lesson. Dang. I'm not gonna complain. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad people are interested. It's funny, definitely in the concealed carry classes, I tell people I said, I'm not going to make you say anything out loud, but just real quick, tell me your name and where you're originally from, because no one's originally from North Carolina. We're all moving here. And I joke, I needed a shirt that said like, we're the good Californians moving here, I swear. But that's been really interesting to see like a lot of people coming from like in Los Angeles for a long time and maybe even close to to today, um, the Los Angeles sheriff's department had a 0.002 percent approval rate to get a concealed carry permit wow and probably the same with like new jersey new york so they move here and they're like oh wait like Mm -hmm. i can actually get this permit and it's a pretty easy process and it's not going to cost thousands of dollars so that's been interesting to see yeah exactly yeah i know i've I've seen the same thing they were like okay so wait after this class and we just make our appointment with the sheriff's office and we apply for it and they're like that's it and i'm like yeah Mm -hmm. congratulations welcome to the free state well i said i used to say that now i'm like Uh, colorado is like california but it is i mean it's crazy how many people in california are pro-gun and i haven't Mm -hmm. looked at the stats in a long time but for the most part people in california california was my number one state for the amount of uh podcast downloads which maybe they were, yeah, maybe they were living vicariously through me. I don't know, but it just goes (laughs) to show like, you know, the very few, the people that live in these cities can make up, you know, and decide Mm -hmm. for the overall, like they're definitely not, you know, they're not representing their constituents. They're definitely not upholding the constitution. And it's just like, it's just mind blowing. I'm like, how is this not criminal? Mm -hmm. Right. And then going back to like concealed carry permits, it's so important to research your local sheriff who's running for the sheriff because Mm -hmm. I think it's like something 8% of Americans actually go out and vote for their sheriff, but they're the ones who are going to, you know, approve or deny your right to concealed carry. Yeah, no, that's actually, that's a really good point. All right. So wrapping up, so let people know um, where they can find your book, where they can find you on social media, what your website is, all of that good stuff. Okay. Let's see. Uh, The book can be purchased on my website, which is highcaliberoc.com. And it's also on amazon.com. And then on Instagram, it is highcaliber underscore NC. All right. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, I have some sad news. Caldwell will not be renewing with the podcast. Nothing personal to me or them. It's just kind of how things have sort of played out. So if you guys have been putting off using the coupon code, don't put it off anymore. But essentially, you can get all kinds of stuff. I mean, my favorite is their steel. I'm going to continue to put quite a bit of their steel on my range that my dad gave me. They said that, you know, they would love to stalk me with that stuff. So we're we're definitely on good terms. But yeah, that code is GUNFUNNY10. You'll get 10% off. CaldwellShooting.com. You can get all kinds of stuff. Steel targets, ear eye pro, shooting bags, 
bipods, I mean, all kinds of stuff, you name it. But just, you know, shout out to Caldwell for supporting us all of these years. And we are definitely sad to see you guys go. Politics. What is going on in the world today? It's political AF. Today in politics, SCOTUS takes up frame receiver rule. This week, the Supreme Court announced they would hear Vanderstock versus Garland, one of the challenges to the ATF's new rule, which redefined the definition of a frame or a receiver and requirements on the identification of firearms. Last fall in the Fifth Circuit, a nationwide order blocking the rule was issued until SCOTUS intervened and granted a stay of the decision pending appeal to the full Fifth Circuit. Subsequently, the full Fifth Circuit found portions of the rule to be unconstitutional and the government immediately appealed to SCOTUS. Last August, SCOTUS issued a stay allowing the unconstitutional rule with conservative leaning justices Roberts and Barrett, both siding with the liberal justices to be enforced while it worked through the appeal process. Now the case will be fully heard before SCOTUS. There is little doubt that if the precepts of Bruin and the EPA case are applied, the same rule will be thrown out, but there are no guarantees. The liberal justices will obviously side with the ATF, but the key to the case will be in showing that the rule violates the Administrative Procedures Act and there are no historical analogs allowing such a rule. On that front, it's very clear that from the very beginning of the country, it's been our right to build our own firearms. Serial numbers weren't even required on firearms until 1968. The portions of the rule targeting so-called quote-unquote ghost guns is a blatant violation of this. Also, ATF arbitrarily changing the definition without Congress passing legislation is a clear violation of the separation of powers and the APA. Hearings aren't scheduled yet, but stay tuned. It probably will be sometime this summer. Fingers crossed on that. Who does the ATF think they are? I know. I mean, it's like really with any government, like this is why I've become so anti-government. The other day I laughed because um, I told my friend last week I went to a Libertarian Party event (laughs) and then went out to eat with my friend, got a little tipsy and told her exactly why we need guns to protect ourselves from the government. (laughs) And I just am laughing because I'm like, when did I become this? I mean, I'm sure many people would see it as an extremist. (laughs) But like, the thing is, is like any government entity, I'm like, no, you don't trust them at all. Like, it's just and there's so there's so much overreach. And like, you know, where are the consequences for these people that are clearly like going against the law, and they're able to do so. And there's just, you know, nobody is getting penalized for it. Right. I say in vino veritas, you spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's all it is all true. Everything you just said. But yeah, just, I feel like no one is held accountable. And all these politicians, they just keep getting reelected and reelected. And our money is not going to anywhere where it should go, in my opinion. So. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Uh, this segment is brought to you from Rose by Sig Sauer. Six Hour Rose. So I do not have a guest this week to interview, but good news is they actually have a retreat going on as we speak. It's taking place in Boca Raton, Florida, and it is supposed to be bougie, which when I saw them say that this is supposed to be bougie, I'm like, I can only imagine because when I went on the retreat in Nashville, that was bougie. I mean, I think I've said this before, like the charcuterie board at one event, they had a charcuterie board every event, but there was one that was like the size of like an eight foot by maybe three foot table. And I'm like, that thing had to have cost more than my car. (laughs) Like it was just, it was amazing. And then they had all this other food and like they rent out the entire place. Like, it's not like you're sharing with like a bunch of, you know, people in the public, like they will hands down, like rent out the entire place. And I'm really excited. There's one lady who is in the Rose group and Heather, I don't know if you're on Facebook, but if you want to join to be like with like-minded women, I would definitely recommend joining the Rose Community Facebook group. It's just a really fun group and people are always posting in there like how they carry or what other guns they like. Like it's not just like it's dedicated to stick Rose, but like it definitely kind of ventures off from that as well. But this one woman, so she's been keeping us posted and like just posting all kinds of pictures 
And it looks like, I don't know if this is the first day, but so they essentially, they get to their hotels. They have a swag bag. I remember that swag bag. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm guessing that they rented out the Flamingo Grill for dinner. And this place just looks really cool really cute it's outside it looks for one it's amazing weather and i'm super like i'm just Mm -hmm. jealous because i could use some nice weather as of right now it's been raining um but like yeah it's just like and there's monsteras which you guys know i love plants but it just looks like everyone's just like having like the time of their life they have these really good drinks like it she took pictures of like the cocktail list there's lots of pink which i got to say i i've always loved pink then i took a little break from pink and now i'm like all about pink again <laughs> i do like the rose gold that's very trendy now right yeah. the rose gold well i just love it because they've done such a good job where it's not like bubblegum pink you know right and it's not like the entire gun like it's just accents and mm-hmm. i don't know and then it looks like they did some other event where everyone was dressed up in white and the place that they're staying at is so beautiful i wish i could share these pictures but if you guys want to see them just join the rose community facebook group and it's just it's amazing but um, is the retreat typically every april no. So they're doing retreats all over. And if you guys go to sixhour.com forward slash rose, you could, let me see, let me go on that website right now. So there's the rose seminar schedule, which is not the same as the retreat, but they do have retreats coming up. And I want to say it's like maybe once a month, once every month and a oh, half wow. or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, they get all these women together I will say it's not inexpensive. It's not an inexpensive trip, but you definitely get your money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, and you get your money's worth because they're just spoiling the heck out of you. Like they just give you like the best treatment ever, you know? And like I said, they take you to all these places. Like the food is amazing. You spend a day, well, like half a day with Lena on the range. And then the other half, you are with some SIG instructors and they tell you how to take your gun apart and how to clean it. And like, it's really just, it's so perfect for, I would say really any experience levels, but it's great for people who want to get their feet wet and kind of have that nice foundation. Mm -hmm. And then you also do a bunch of other fun things. So it's not just like totally gun related. You know, sometimes Mm -hmm. they'll be like, all right, like their last retreat uh, took place in Chicago. And so they're like, all right, what's Chicago known for? And they like did like a pizza tour. And when we were in Nashville, we did like a little music thing. And it's just, Mm -hmm. I don't know, it was really fun. So you get to meet like-minded women, but then you also learn a bunch about guns. And then I'm assuming that all the retreats have very similar, kind of a similar schedule. Lena also taught us like how to draw from her holster. And we tried different holsters. We had the Kydex holster. We had the fanny pack holster, which I'll say at first, I didn't love the fanny pack. And Mm -hmm. like, I personally, I've kind of like childbearing hips, like (laughs) these freaking hips. My sister and I both, we have like our mom's hips and we just always, we always joke about it, but it's nothing wrong with that. I know. Shakira. I know, seriously. But I think because of the hips, it makes the fanny pack always want to slide up like towards your torso. But I finally figured out a way how to keep it there and it's not sliding. And drawing from that holster and being able to fire up two shots, which I used the Mantis X10 system, I could do that within Mm -hmm. under two seconds and I could draw very quickly. Yeah. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm actually kind of loving the way that the fanny pack is, especially when I go hiking and stuff, because I want my hands right. free and I don't want something on me, especially if I'm sweating and stuff. But right. But I just love that because she goes over ways that you can carry that you probably wouldn't have thought to do otherwise, which is what I did. You know, I would have never mm-hmm. thought to really carry in a fanny pack, but it's just it's a really great class. And then if you guys want to check out any of the seminars so the seminars i believe are free don't quote me on that but they're if not it's they're not expensive and lena is going to all these gun stores where she will you know tell you about the gun you can ask her questions they have all kinds coming up and if you just go to sigsour.com forward slash rose and at the top of the page click on upcoming seminars it will give you a list of you know, like they're they're going to uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida, Washington, Texas, North Carolina, California. Hey, yeah, actually, 
So North Carolina, so Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's at the Triangle Shooting Center, and that's October 26th. Oh, I'll okay. oh, put that on the calendar. Yeah, I think it would just be a great, I mean, if nothing else, I would imagine, you know, one, you can meet Lena, but two, you could also meet women that are probably following this Facebook group. There's been a really nice community just created around it and... It's just, I don't know. I'm very thankful for SIG and doing this and kind of having a place for women to learn more about guns and, and get excited about firearms because it was definitely needed. Yeah. It was something that we all wanted, but nobody was doing. Right. So, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, these you know. These retreats sound amazing. I, I know. definitely want to look into these retreats. That sounds so fun. It is. It is so nice. It's so Did luxurious. you go with a friend or did you just go and meet people? So they, they invited me to go out there and I went by myself. Oh, and I the only uh-huh. other person that I knew was Grantham's wife. I knew she oh, was going, okay. but I went into this pretty blindsided, kind of like all events, you know, like the GOA event. I'm like, who's going? Mm-hmm. I only know like a handful of people, but I'm like, whatever, you know, I mean, as much as I don't want to do this, sometimes you got to put yourself out there. But then every time I've gone to an event where I was like, kind of maybe hesitant, I've never regretted it. Like I've mm-hmm. always made a lot more friendships and, you know, new people, like yeah. new people and stuff like that. So I just I'm sure it's... you've heard of, um, or maybe you've been to the Train and Learn with Alicia and no other choice. Yeah, I'll be going at oh, the end yeah. of May yeah, in yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. I've heard so many great things about this class, so I'm, I'm excited. I've been invited. I haven't gone before. Um, oh, you should come. Yeah, I know. Next month. It'd be I great know. to see you. It's just like the problem is there's so many things going on and then... You know, like for, are you going to the NRA show by chance? I'm going to pass this year, maybe next year though. Yeah. It yeah. does look like fun though. Well, I don't, I mean, the NRA, I have my, you know, I kind of have this love hate relationship with them, but I do go right. just to support a lot of my sponsors. I'll be doing a booth appearance with federal premium on oh, Saturday fun. from 11 to 12, I believe. I'll keep you guys posted on that, but yeah. it's taking place in Dallas. So if you guys are going to be there, definitely come by. But in the meantime, check out sigsour.com forward slash rose. And then definitely check out the community rose Facebook group and just let them know that I sent you. Just say Ava sent me and we'll get you um, all set up with that group. It's a lot of fun. Also, as promised, I said last week that I was going to be doing a giveaway and I did the catchphrase tactical baddie. And a lot of mm-hmm. people emailed me, some people messaged me, some people wrote it on the show when it was posted. Um, so I really appreciate everyone who uh, got involved. But I am, let me just click on this auto generator real quick and see who the winner is. All right. So Drum roll. The, 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 the winner is, da, 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 da. so it is Billy Brian Hill. Congratulations. You won the Rose Blanket. So contact me at gunfunny.com, click on the contact us link, and then send me a good mailing address to send that to. But I do really appreciate you guys participating in that. And again, this was a blanket that is not for sale. And it's just, it's a really cute, like nice blanket. So congrats, Billy Brian Hill. Congratulations, Billy. And also, how awesome is the tactical baddie? Love her. So glad I got to meet her in Texas. I know. I loved her too. Yeah. Tacti Talk, discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. Today in Tacti Talk, Troy releases new PAR. And I don't know if it's like PAR or PAR. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But Troy Industries has just announced an updated version of their PAR rifle for this year. Like the upsurge in lever guns, the PAR is in response to the disease of state white bands that unfortunately keep spreading on semi-autos like the AR and the AK. If you haven't seen it, it's basically a pump action AR, but keep in mind, it's not a shotgun. It does not shoot 12 gauge, but hence the name PAR. So that's why I'm like, is it PAR or PAR? Although they have wisely made the upper and lower receiver proprietary. It's essentially AR-like, but with the upper and lower unique, it's not going to get banned by name in the most restrictive bands that have been passed, such as like in Washington and what they're trying to ban in Colorado as well. On the surface, the PR 
looks a lot like a normal AR, but other than using standard AR mags and having controls and ergonomics, it's functionally just like a pump action shotgun. The pump itself is hidden underneath rail covers that look very similar to a contoured grip on the forend, but there's little slots to allow the pumping movement. Another difference is it does not need a buffer tube, so you can get them with a five position stock with either right or left hand folding. The design even lets you eject shells even when it is folded. The biggest visible design change is the forend is getting m slots for modern accessories. The pump action movement obviously limits what you can place on the forend, but there are still plenty of spots for bipods, lights, optics, etc. This gun is chambered in calibers like 7.62 NATO, 300 Blackout, and 5.56 NATO. And then price starts at 1140 for the 16-inch 5.56 version with a B5 stock. So pretty cool. I definitely want to check that. I wonder if they're going to be at the NRA show, but that sounds kind of cool. I mean, it, it sucks that it has to come to this, like where we have to, okay, now this is the law. So we have to like, you know, try to skirt around the law and still create something that like still appeases us, but like it's now legal, you know, I mean, same thing with lever guns and how they've become tactical lever guns because, you know, they're not trying to ban lever guns for now anyways. So it's like, I'm kind of torn because it's like, yeah, this is total BS. But then on the other hand, it's like, well, it's nice that we have, you know, our industry is so innovative that it's like, okay, cool. Well, you know, that gun scares you because it looks scary. Well, now we're going to create a gun that also looks like an AR that looks very scary. But, you know, according to the action, it's it doesn't fall under the the stupid criteria that makes it so, you know, assaulty. Um, yeah, so I love that Rossi tactical lever action. You you filmed yourself shooting. That looked so fun. That might be my next gun yeah, I purchase. It was fun. I know. Like I I was never really a big lever action person. And then I got that gun and I was like shooting it. And I was like, and it's a it's 3030 Winchester and it has some. <laughs> I mean, between that and then I shot the Rossi Tuffy, which is this single action, it shoots 410 or 45 Colt and both of those i was like dang this both these guns have some mm to it you know like it was Mm -hmm. but it was fun and then i was kind of like i was thinking to myself it would be nice because like the 30 30 ammo is a little expensive so then i was thinking maybe get a lever action that takes you know ammo that's not as expensive but i would really like to figure out how to shoot it really quickly Uh just to show people yeah well on a horse yeah yeah really let's somebody else said that too they're like can you imagine that would be so fun and it kind of would be fun but i just i just want to see how fast i could shoot it just to show Mm -hmm. politicians like it doesn't matter the freaking action with the amount of practice you know i mean look at jerry mikulak like he can shoot a revolver faster than most of us can shoot a Mm -hmm. semi-auto and the fact that so many people i would get it all the time when i worked for the california rifle pistol association it was typically young girls and they would say how can you support semi-automatic weapons? And I would be really <laughs> nice to them. I'd say, I will explain it to you, but first, can you tell me what the word semi-automatic means? And mm-hmm. there'd be a long pause and they'd go, no. And I'm like, can we just admit that like, you know, you're trying to ban something. You don't even know what the word is. So let me explain it to you. Yeah, I know. No, it's frustrating because semi-auto sounds so scary. Like they and they they think semi-auto is like a full auto. One press of the trigger, they, multiple they rounds. Totally do. Yes. I'm like, uh, oh, I, yeah. I wish that's what semi-auto was. That'd be a lot of fun. Like yeah. so much more fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what's funny is um, in every class I teach, even though it's a concealed carry handgun class, I talk about what AR stands for. I'm like, I just think it's important that everyone who leaves here knows what AR and AR-15 stands for because everyone thinks it's assault rifle. No, it's a made up term and mm-hmm. it's not automatic rifles. So they leave at least knowing that much. Yeah. No, I mean, at this point, I never miss an opportunity to have a discussion with somebody who's anti-gun. And I think that that's mm-hmm. what we need to start doing is, you know, but but not be jerks about it. Just be like, all right, well, and first, I like how you do it because it's like, well, kind of put them in their place and then they realize how stupid they sound. And right. it's like, all right, well, now that we know you don't know what you're talking about, let me explain to you, you know, what right. you're trying to ban. But mm-hmm. yeah.
Smith and Wesson. So Heather, you were telling me right before the show that you just got yourself a new Smith and Wesson handgun. I did. I got the Slide Easy, and they definitely named it <laughs> correctly. It is a very easy slide on that gun. Yeah. So you got the, it's a 380 Easy. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So it's essentially, it's a Smith & Wesson Shield EZ, the letters easy. And I got to say, they definitely hit it out of the park with that one because, you know, as an instructor, I'm sure you meet lots of people that just, you know, maybe they have arthritis or they're a little bit older. They just don't have the the upper body strength to rack that slide back. And this gun, I mean, anytime I've handed them this gun, hands down, I've, I've never actually met anybody that can't work this slide. So yeah, it's that's just, a good point. I haven't either. Yeah, it's I mean, it's just it's a game changer. And then on top of that, the magazine. So it's very similar to what we would see with those like 22 mags. It has mm-hmm. those little tabs on the side that you can pull down as you're loading it. So it makes loading the magazine so much easier. So it's just perfect for anybody who lacks that hand strength or can't move their fingers that well. It's you know, it's just it's great. And actually, Smith & Wesson is another sponsor that will not be renewing after this month. So um, we do appreciate Smith and Wesson and hopefully I have some good news for you guys coming up, but stay tuned for that. But yeah, in the meantime, check it out. Smith-Wesson.com. Stupid, funny, cool, interesting, awesome as never mind. A F. Two A doesn't exist in this courtroom. So back in 2020, when the world was shut down because of COVID mandates, Dexter Taylor discovered the world of home building firearms. He learned about 80% receivers and how he could machine them to finish them himself. Immediately, he was hooked. He started building rifles and pistols in total around eight Glock style pistols and six AR style rifles. Everything was purchased legally and he has no criminal background that would prevent him from legally purchasing them. Problem is, he is from New York. An ATF NYPD task force discovered he was legally purchasing parts and opened an investigation that led to a SWAT raid and his arrest in 2022. The 52-year-old software engineer was convicted this week in a blatantly biased New York court and is currently jailed on Rikers Island while he awaits sentencing. From the beginning of the trial, it was clear the court was against him in every way. The judge... Abina Darka interrupted his lawyer's opening statement multiple times and forbade him from mentioning the Second Amendment during the trial. She said, and I quote, do not bring the Second Amendment into this courtroom. It doesn't exist here. So you can't argue the Second Amendment. This is New York, which is like mind blowing. Yeah. His attorney filed appropriate paperwork to preserve these arguments for appeal, but the judge rejected those arguments. During the trial, the prosecution painted Taylor as a quote-unquote dangerous individual who was building dangerous firearms in his basement. They objected to allow his family in the courtroom to show support or allow a neighbor who knew about the hobby to testify as a witness. I don't even know how this is legal. Right. Why do they always send good people to Rikers Island? I know. Well, yeah. And like, can you imagine this guy has no criminal history, nothing. And then you're spending all this time in jail. Like Mm. Dexter never even fired the guns that he built. And there's no evidence that he was a threat to anyone. Again, the judge shut down arguments that showed there was no crime or allegation of violence. The judge even bullied jurors on how they must rule and basically said they must vote guilty without actually saying the words. Dexter's case is obviously going to be appealed, but unfortunately, this is a long process and he's currently in jail for what is historically no crime and in most states, perfectly legal. This like blows my mind. I feel so bad for the guy. And his poor family, too. I know his family can't even go into court to watch. Like, since mm-hmm. when is that, you know, who they allow and who they don't allow in court no. to just show support? It goes back to what you were saying about the cops. Like, there's good people and bad people. Yeah. And every but it's like, just imagine being the ATF. Like, who's the one who first investigated that and then being the one to kick down his door? And mm-hmm. like, how do those people sleep at night? Yeah. And like, I could understand maybe to a degree if there was some sort of criminal history, 
but this guy is an engineer. Like if anything, he's probably, you know, not to stereotype engineers, but he's probably kind of nerdy. Mm -hmm. And, and then on top of that, he didn't, he hasn't even fired the guns. Like it was just kind of a hobby. And like, I know we all picked up Mm -hmm. some weird hobbies in 2020. I mean, I got really carried away with plants. I'll admit, you know, (laughs) but yeah, it's just, it blows my mind. And then to say that the second amendment, like you can't argue the second amendment, this is New York, New York, like get out of here. I don't know. Hopefully organizations like GOA and FPC are helping this guy because I definitely feel for him. Mm -hmm. And then someone else pointed out the fact how like there's a lot of gangbangers videotaping and like putting it on social media. They're, you know, Glock switches, like going fully auto and like, and you don't see the ATF raiding their homes at two in the morning. It's like... (laughs) Why, why is this only trending one way where these people have no criminal history? They're really not even breaking a law, but those are the ones who are getting raided by the ATF. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it blows my mind. I mean, same with even TikTok. Like there's people like shooting guns like at people in dangerous settings and like their account doesn't get shut down. And I post one video of me shooting in a safe environment on the range and my shit gets, you know. Can't, like uh, yeah. deleted like it's just i don't know it's it's so backwards and i'm mm-hmm. telling you guys like if you're listening you need to get active we need to stop being complacent because like stupidity is taking over america it is yeah funny but also frustrating story about instagram and it really points out the bias but i put up a post that just said next concealed carry class is on this date and within minutes instagram took it down Uh, They said it goes against their guidelines. And then a friend said, try this. I reposted it with a whole bunch of riding with Biden, Kamala Harris, and like all these different flags. And guess what? Instagram kept it up the whole time. Like it's it's still there. And it just kind of goes to show like how biased they are. And it's like, well, if you say this, but you lean this way, it's okay. And it's acceptable. (laughs) Wow. uh, How ridiculous. And now it's time to wrap up. So iTunes reviews. We have two reviews. One is from one underscore white underscore ton titled great show. Five stars. Always enjoy listening to the podcast. Next is I'm orange juice Mm -hmm. titled show is great, informative and entertaining. Five stars. The show helps me keep up to date with everything going on 2A and has empowered me to fight harder for my 2A rights. Awesome. That's always good to hear. I'm glad that, you know, some people I've actually had a lot of people message me and say that, that like I've pushed them to, you know, get active. So if nothing else, I I will say sometimes I do get a little discouraged and I'm like, "Uh, is what I'm doing making a difference? And I would feel really sad that like Carrie just spent almost two months fighting for all these anti-gun bills and then watch they all pass. Like that would just be Um, really, you know, discouraging. But I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like you got to keep going and... You may not see, you know, the effects of your hard work right off, but like if you just right. keep going, eventually it's going to pay off. And then again, right. And now of, you've got this company coming up and this organization. Yeah. Look at all the great things that have come from this. So. Exactly. So, yeah. So hopefully it encourages more people because I'm telling you, if it's not happening in your state, it will. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when this is spreading. So definitely, you guys, uh, stay active and make your voices heard. All right. So you guys can find me at gunfunny.com. There's links to everything there for social media. Think about becoming a Patreon if you enjoy the show and you want to support it. You could do so by going to gunfunny.com, clicking on the support the show link, and you can make a donation, a one-time donation or a monthly donation. And also want to thank the $25 Patreons who are Sake Holsters, Daniel Treadwell, Keith Callamore, Daniel Lee, Nick Theodosian, Tristan Smith, Melissa Ridings, William Nave, and Patrick Homer. And then King of the Patreon, Jon Snow. And Heather, thank you again. I really appreciate all that you've done and your time spending it with me. Can you just remind people once again where they can find you on social media and your website and book and all of that good stuff? Oh, yeah. So social media is Instagram. It's high caliber underscore NC for North Carolina. And the website is uh, highcaliberoc.com. Keeping it OG from the 
<laughs> East Coast to the West Coast because I can't figure out how to switch, change it. But And then the book is um, on my website and also on Amazon. It is called 50 States in My Sight. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Thank you. So great talking to you. Thanks. I hope everyone has a great week and I will talk to you next Monday. Keep up the great work. Bye-bye. <laughs> Want to send feedback? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact. <laughs>